Hi friends, it's Monica and welcome to my reaction to Shadow and Bone Season 2, Episodes 4 and 5. Continuing from my reaction series of Shadow and Bone, there might be spoilers ahead so be warned and if you missed previous episodes, those will be linked down in the description box below and let's just get right to it. So we're going to be starting off with Episode 4. Today marks the start of a new era of cooperation between Lansoffs and the Grisha. I'm delighted to announce my engagement to Alina Stark. I can't with Mal's reaction here. And everyone's reaction is just brilliant with just like the looks that they're giving. You came here for Ravka. I came here for you. You're my flag, Alina. You are my nation. Mal is being kind of dramatic here, I would say, because he's declaring Alina is his nation and his flag and his everything. It's like a declaration of love, which is sweet. I think this scene reminds me of Book Mal somehow. Mm. Not many people can pull off a beak. Go on, your turn. I like this little moment of Jesper and Wineland flirting a bit and also they're dressing up in costumes for like a job, which is so typical of the pros. I share no bond with Kerrigan. I wouldn't be so sure. The fragment is out of his hand, but there is still residue of the stag. He asked me about a link. There is a connection between Elena and the Darkling, and that's because of the antler amplifier being in both Kerrigan and in Elena. I need to make an example of this rat. You'll pay for this, you double-dealing witch. Nah, this confrontation with Pekka and we see how Nina might be on Pekka's side but I'm predicting that that's not the case because Kaz is known for like double crossing people and not telling anyone of his plans so I'm, I'm expecting something to be exposed. But I need you to do something for me and I need you to make it look real. I need something that mimics firepox. Like I was just saying a little bit earlier, <laughs> Nina is on another aspect of a plan that we didn't get to see as viewers to the crows they're not really going to betray each other the trick is not to love anything your mistake was that you let someone get in someone you'd sacrifice everything for and it makes you weak and i think now we're seeing another side of kaz we all know that he's ruthless but now he's showing his side of being really ruthless i would prefer you call me vasily at least when we're in private what can I do for you, Moisarevich? Not the king coming onto Alina as well and him being a little bit slimy about it, which is not too great. <laughs> Ew. I'd like to find out. You may have gathered this about me, but silences, they, they really aren't my favorite thing. Ooh, I'm so happy that Jesper and Wylan has their moments this season and it's really fun. Nina said everything worked out. I didn't know where you were. I didn't know if Pekka had hired another assassin to kill you. I didn't know if you would- I'm fine. I think finally we're getting to see Kaz express more emotion towards Inej and him being really defensive here and being like, I didn't know where you were. That's just so happy for my Kanej shipping. <laughs> for my ship to sail. I need more of Kaz and Inej. They are like top tier with their chemistry and their intensity so good understatement is overrated i love it when you quote me this moment between alina and nikolai is very well done because it's showing that they have a friendship there and yeah there might be an undertone of maybe uh like teasing and like a little bit of flirting it's just very well done with the undertones and everything we have the shadow monsters attacking Oof. and we basically see how the shadow monsters are not being affected by guns or even alina's light so how can they defeat it and also the king is dead if you didn't catch that he got torn apart oh jeez it's good to see you alina <laughs> You're not real. The sea whip has made you stronger. Is he actually there? It's the mind link. I'm only doing this because I care about you. Let me help you. I like the dark leadership, but I think 
it's borderline like getting too much for me <laughs> but at the same time it's like it's a possibility but i believe alina towards the darkling would be a full no for her so for now we just have these small mental moments between them we'll rule together side by side i promised that you and i would change the world i intend to keep that promise that is never going to happen so this is actually our first interaction physical interaction between elena and the darkling and it's very intense he's still trying to appeal to her but again she's not having it i really enjoy these type of interactions between them that are not him just like appearing out of nowhere I got like creepier vibes when he was kind of creeping on her when she was sleeping, was giving Edward from Twilight and I didn't really like that. I don't know, there's something going on when it's actually them physically together in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right to episode 5. Helena Starkov is worth more than any army. So at the risk of sounding repetitive, find her. I like how the Darkling now is like emphasizing to one of his Grishas, like, find Alina, she is all that matters. It doesn't matter anything else. We don't need, even need an army, we just need Alina. <laughs> Meaning he needs Alina. Now I feel Alina's very paranoid because now she's thinking that the Darkling's here and everywhere. I don't think Alina's like losing it, but she is just more paranoid. And here we get like a direct reason of why Cass always wears his gloves is because of when he was younger and that flashback that we saw of like touching the dead flesh and like so he doesn't like anyone to actually physically touch his skin because trauma <laughs> Treve and deliver the Neshienia to Alina Starkov in East Ravka She's returned as has the dark Okay, so now I see how the writers of the show are tying in the crows into the Shadow and Bone storyline and now they're bringing up this mythical sword that will help slay like Shadow and stuff. Because he'd rather push you away than admit he feels anything for you. Oh, was I not supposed to say that out loud? I for one love that you did. <laughs> I love the crows like kind of poking fun here. What I want to know is whether or not you truly mean to fix all that is broken about Ravka, or if you were just destined to repeat the failures of our previous kings. We see how Jenya survived the shadow monster attack. I really like what she's saying to Nikolai here. Of, it's a really nice food for thought for him. Ooh, and now we're going to be introduced to Shuhan, which is another country in the Shadow and Bone universe. And I think this one is like inspired off of Asian cultures. Well, in private, he's all hands. Isn't that right? Yeah. Waffles. <laughs> Waffles. I love how they do the schemes, um, like the crows with Nina and Cass pretending to be wife and husband. And it's kind of funny. But we see how Cass is like taking off his clothes and of course something happens and then Mina touches him to like say like oh dude are you okay but then he's like trauma PTSD you were supposed to follow her I couldn't leave you not like this but then we have Inej showing up and kind of saving Kaz in a sense to have his gloves back Okay, now Alina's trying to seduce the Darkling back, like giving him what he wants. It's a trap for the Darkling to try to sever their connection. Oh, Saints now! I had him! We would have severed our link if you hadn't pulled my focus! But it fails because Mal interrupts. And she's a bit upset at him. It leads to me saving Ravka, repairing the Saints Forsaken country. To what end? To the extent that it needs. Is it anything other than that? Okay, my thoughts on Mal and Lena are that they're having a little bit of struggle right now because Alina's in a fake engagement, she's doing like bigger and better things, and maybe Mal is having self-esteem issues. I don't think Alina is really thinking so far ahead and she's just focusing on defeating the Darkling no matter what. 
He loves you, Elena. I mean, I say that. I still think that Nikolai and Elena, they have a really strong friendship going on. And I do like how Nick is asking about Mal. He's just like a thoughtful guy. Even though he is that charming, roguish character, I still like how he has different sides to him here. Oh, his hand, you can actually see like it's burnt. Ooh. So maybe the link thing did work. And what of the Sun Summoner? The whole world will hear it when I make her scream. Damn, that was a quick 180. Well, Elena did try to like seduce him and then try to like sever their connection. But they, okay, Darkwing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and look, the episode ends off with Kaz thinking that his brother's alive, but he's dead. Is he really alive? I don't know. <laughs> but I think I'm going to end this video here. So thank you so much for watching and seeing my reactions. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also want to say, I hope you can give my video a huge thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below to not miss any future uploads. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.